Okay, in this video we're gonna look at problem A2 from the 2014 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. So let's define an n by n matrix A, and I'm gonna put here upper n in parentheses by Aij is equal to one over the minimum of Ij, and that's for um, one less than or equal to Ij less than or equal to n. And the goal is to find the determinant of n. We're gonna use the following fact as we form our solution. We'll do some exploration before we use this fact, but the fact goes like this. If we replace the ith row of a matrix with the sum of the ith row and the and m times the j throw, and I should say here i and j are not the same, then the determinant does not change. So in other words, this is like a row operation where we do like row i plus m times row j uh, equals our new row i. Generally, when I'm teaching a linear algebra class, I write that in the following way. So I have row i plus m times row j becomes my new row i. Okay. So, uh, let's do some exploration before we get into that fact, which we will prove, um, and then look at our solution. Okay, so let's look at n equals 1, so in other words, a upper 1. So this is going to be a 1 by 1 matrix, which is just the number 1. So obviously, the determinant of this thing is 1. Okay, good. So now, uh, let's go ahead and look at A upper 2. So notice that's going to be 1 and 1 in the first row in the first column because that follows like very, very easily by this formula. Now in the second row, second column, so right here, we're going to get 1 over 2 because the minimum of 2 and 2 is equal to 2, obviously. Great. So now we can easily calculate the determinant of this thing um, just by using the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So that's going to be a half minus 1. In other words, that's going to be equal to negative 1 half. All right, so now let's look at n equals 3. So if n equals 3, we have a 1, 1, 1. So there's our first row in our first column. And then we have a half, a half. So that fills out our second row in our second column. And then we're going to have a third down here. Okay. So um, I'll leave it to you guys to do some uh, cofactor expansion. But it's pretty easy to check that the determinant of A3 is equal to uh, uh, 1 over 12. So already we can see that something's happening uh, with an alternating signs. We've got 1 minus 1 half and then positive 1 over 12. Another thing that we can notice is if we do a row operation here, so let's go ahead and do maybe row 3 minus row 2 becomes our new row 3. So I'm going to do this row minus this row and replace it with that row. So uh, that's going to give me the matrix. So I'll just put this twiddle to mean this is these are row equivalent. So the first two rows are the same. So I've got something like that. And then I have uh, 1, 1 half, 1 half. And then I have 0, 0 because those two are going to cancel. And then right here I have 1 third minus 1 half. And now, notice that I can do cofactor expansion across the third row in order to get that the determinant of this, which maybe I'll write as just an arrow with the determinant over, so that's the determinant operation. So this is going to be one-third minus one-half, so we're cofactor expanding about that term. And now, instead of writing what this determinant is, I'm just going to write it as the determinant of A2. Okay, good. So it looks like uh, we have this uh, nice um, recursion that's building up. Okay, so I'm going to erase the board. I'll look at the n equals 4 case, and then I think we can uh, do this in general. Okay, so one last exploration, we're going to look at the n equals 4 case. So A4, that's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. So 1's on the first row in the first column. We can fill out the second row and the second column with halves. The third row and the third column with thirds. And then finally, this part at 4, 4 is going to be a quarter.
Now, uh, let's go ahead and do that row operation just as before. So we'll do row four minus row three. Um, it becomes our new row four. So uh, that's going to give us a row equivalent matrix, which, which looks like this. So we've got one, 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 uh, one, and then one, half, 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 uh, one, half, uh, third, third. And then finally, uh, this is going to be zero, 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 because we've got one minus one, half minus half, third minus third. And then we finally have a quarter minus third. So we've got something like that going on. Now we're going to do cofactor expansion again. <clears throat> this time across the fourth row and the fourth column. And that's going to give us uh, the determinant of this is one quarter minus one third times the determinant of this sub matrix. But notice the sub matrix is exactly A3, so we get the determinant of A3. Um, okay, good. So uh, now the next thing I want to do is clean up the board. We're going to wave our hands at a proof of this, and then we'll look at the solution. Let's go ahead and look at the proof of this fact before we uh, finish off this solution. And uh, the real proof of this fact is built off of the following observation, and that is um, this row operation is equivalent to multiplication by the following matrix. So this matrix, which is given by uh, ones on the diagonal, and then we have an M in this spot right here, where this is the ith row and the jth column. And then let's define a matrix, define a matrix X by uh, the transposes of these column vectors. So V1 transpose all the way down to Vn transpose. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we multiply these two. So in other words, we're going to do Mij uh, times X, uh, but that's going to give us one all the way down there. And then notice we have this M right here, which is in the ith spot and the jth spot, and then we're multiplying by this matrix made up of the transposes of these vectors. Okay, so now uh, it's easy to check that doing this matrix multiplication, none of these are going to change except for the ith position. So, that means that we can write all of those as is. So V1 transpose all the way down to VI minus one transpose, VI plus one transpose all the way down to VN transpose. So we've got something like that. But now let's see what's happening in the ith position. So if we go over here to the ith position, notice we have a one one in the i, i spot. So that's going to give us a v, i transpose thing. And then we have an m in the i, j spot. So that's going to hit the j entry. And so that's going to give us uh, m times v, j in that spot. So what we get right here is v, i transpose plus m times v, j transpose. Great. But notice that's exactly what we would have gotten by doing this row operation, row i plus m times row j equals row i. Okay, so now to continue the proof about why the determinant is not changed, notice that the determinant of this matrix, since it's a lower triangular matrix, um, in this case, or maybe sometimes it would be an upper triangular matrix, uh, is just going to be the, multi the product of the diagonals, but the product of the diagonals is one. And so what we can really do is just use the fact that the determinant of m i j times x is going to be the determinant of m i j times the determinant of x, but the determinant of m i j is 1, so we just get the determinant of x. 
So that proves this claim right here that uh, the determinant is not changed. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then we'll do our solution. Okay, so we can finish the solution off with the following claim. So the determinant of the n case, in other words, of a upper n, will be minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n minus 1 factorial n factorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and prove this claim by induction. So let's see our base case. So our base case will be the n equals uh, 1 case. But we've already really worked on the n equals 1 case. Notice the determinant of a1 is going to be the determinant of the 1 by 1 matrix 1, which is 1. But notice uh, that's exactly equal to minus 1 to the 1 plus 1, which is minus 1 squared, over uh, 1 minus 1 factorial, which is 0 factorial, times 1 factorial. Okay, so the base case holds. Now uh, let's make our induction hypothesis. Okay, so let's uh, suppose this is true for um, n equals k, and then let's look at the k plus 1 case. So uh, let's consider a uh, k plus 1, um, but notice that a k plus 1 uh, looks like the following. So we have a 1, 1, we have all 1's there, and then we have all halves here, all thirds nested inside here, like that. And then finally, we have down here is a 1 over k plus 1, and that's surrounded by these 1 over k's, like that. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is I want to do a row operation on this a k plus 1, and the row operation that I will do um, is as follows. So I'm going to take this k plus first row and subtract this k row. So I'm going to go ahead and do r uh, k plus 1 minus r k becomes my new r k plus 1. Okay. So let's see what I get. So that's going to give me the following matrix. So I'm going to write this row down here um, at the bottom first. So that's going to be all zeros. And then my last thing will be 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k. Okay, good. And then notice that I don't really care what's happening above this because when I do my cofactor expansion for my determinant, I don't even need that. So I'm just going to put a big star right here. Doesn't matter what those are. They didn't change, but it doesn't matter what they are. And then notice that I have a sub matrix right here, which is exactly equal to A of K. Great. So I've got something like that. But now what I can do is I can do uh, cofactor expansion for the determinant. And notice that the determinant of a k plus 1 is going to be equal to this term right here. So that's going to be 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k times the determinant of this matrix. So let's go ahead and write that down, the determinant of a upper k. Okay, great. So now I'm going to like erase uh, this bottom part of the board, bring this part up, and then we're almost done. Okay, so we left off at this point. We've got the determinant of the k plus 1 case is this 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k times the determinant of the a k case. So now what I want to do is put these two things together. So notice that we can put these two things together pretty easily into minus 1 over k times um, k plus 1. Okay, so that's pretty easy to see. And then by our induction hypothesis, we know exactly what that is. That's going to be minus 1 to the k plus 1 over um, k minus 1 factorial times k factorial. Okay, now we want to multiply these together uh, in the following way. So we'll combine these two things which I've underlined in red. And then we're going to combine these two things that I'm underlining in blue.
and then obviously multiply the minus ones on the top. And notice that's gonna give me minus one to the K plus two over um, K factorial times k plus 1 factorial. And you might want to read that as k plus 1 minus 1 factorial, so that's obviously k factorial, and then k plus 1 factorial, so it looks exactly like this with n equals k plus 1. Okay, great. This is a good place to stop.